1079 CDY. This is Cadillac's Hit Music Station, and we are pausing for a half hour to get to some local chat here with Cadillac Unscripted. Katie Huckle is with me. The uh, program is sponsored by our friends at uh, Remax Central, Marianne Quist, as well as Independent Bank. And Katie, we are talking arts here we today. Are. We are. And this man brings the arts and makes them happen in Cadillac. So we're excited to have Tim with us this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Tim Florinke is the president of Up North Arts. And Tim, first of all, how did you come to be president of this group? Before we get into what the organization does for the community, how did you come to be president? Well, um, I recently moved to Cadillac about three years ago, and I happened to uh, stumble on Up North Arts. I was actually looking for, to take some uh, art classes and not have to drive all the way to Traverse City to some of the other art or- organizations. And I uh, ran into the, cur- the past president, Chris uh, Fisher, and uh, she and I got talking, and I have a long history of working with nonprofits, probably over 35 or 40 years uh, downstate. Mm-hmm. And uh, we uh, got talking. We had real similar goals, and uh, I really liked what the organization stood for. And it was a fairly, it's a fairly new organization, mm-hmm. it's three years old. And they had a lot of goals and needed to fundraise and try to uh, raise uh, more money uh, in kind of a short period of time uh, to continue uh, developing uh, classes in arts and culture here in Cadillac. You brought up Chris Chris Fisher's name. Chris is a retired art teacher from Cadillac Area Public Schools, longtime art teacher. And I yeah. know her passion for this group is huge, isn't it? Yes, yes. And, you know, I, I, I have the, uh, a very similar vision, what Chris has, and I want to continue uh, to see it happen and bring it forward. And with Chris, there's a number of other individuals that are quite um, devoted, uh, I want to say, to the cause. And uh, we have an, uh, a couple other uh, teachers, and we also have... Uh, uh, retired art teachers from uh, the area, uh, and Sue Melma and uh, Mary Kidder, uh, both worked in the Cadillac uh, school systems for years. And uh, we also have Molly Fryer, who was a, a local businesswoman and uh, had a number of stores downtown. And she is probably a huge driving force, just like Chris. Uh, but she has a business sense about her that is amazing. And I've been working with her all summer, and I've never seen anything like it. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Well, Tim, can you tell us and our listeners, what does Up North Arts do? How do you get art to people and expose um, Cadillac folks to the arts? So um, what we are is a organization that offers art classes for a price. And so we do visual. uh, We actually have performing arts. um, We also have three-dimensional art. And majority of the classes in the past have been focused more towards adults. And this year we've twisted, we've kind of turned this, and this is kind of where my passion is, is to bring the children and bring and involve them uh, more into our center. So um, what we do currently, like I say, you can go online and so forth to see a little more about us, but um, we uh, actually have art classes. Uh, they're usually small. They're probably between six and eight people in a class, and um, a number of different classes that we do have in different studios. We'll kind of talk a little bit more about those. Okay. You have a physical location then? Is that the case? We do. We're in the Kwanzaa Huts uh, on the lake, uh, right across the street from the Cadillac High School football field. Right. And next door to the Senior Center. Yes. Wonderful. So you're easy to get to. Very easy to get to. Lots of parking. Great. And we are handicapped accessible, and we have 
Uh, we actually had a uh, handicapped uh, a bath bathroom made and, and so forth for our center. Wonderful. So are these former teachers the art teachers? Um, they do teach some classes, but our art our uh, artists and uh, fellow uh, instructors come from all over the state. Actually, we have a number of residents that have um, that live downstate as well as up have homes up here. So typically, we get them at different times of the year. So we have quite a potpourri of different people that uh, that come, and some very famous people. Oh, that's exciting! So, what what are you guys doing for kids? You mentioned that you'd, you'd seen a little bit of a change of an adult focus to a kid focus. Can you share some of that programming? Well, I, I sure can. I'm very excited to do so. Um, so let me just give you a little brief tour of the center first, and then I can um, I can tell you a little bit more about the children's uh, programming that's going to happen. Uh, so right now, uh, we our our center has a clay studio. Uh, we also have a fused glass studio. We have two visual arts classrooms for um, for painting, uh, felting. Uh, we also did some. Uh, we also have sewing machines and so forth, uh, so we can do different types of quilting. We've been doing that with. We did that in the past with younger people. We have um, a gift shop which right now, since we haven't been able to uh, have people into the center, we've, we're remodeling our gift shop and our office. Uh, so we're kind of excited about the reopening of that in the spring. And then uh, we also have um, our, our kind of our new section. Uh, and we have upstairs now, and we have our Irish dancers upstairs, so kids can come and have take Irish dance class lessons. We also have downstairs, we're creating our, our new children's center. And in that center, we're going to have, um, uh, we have a music room. So uh, right now we have violin and ukulele lessons, but we will be offering another, uh, a few more different types of lessons. We also will look at um, some of the performing arts uh, with drama and introduction to um, uh, theater and so forth. That will be taught, hopefully, uh, by one of our uh, local uh, thespians. Uh, so we're, we're excited about that come this fall, early spring. And then we have two new visual art classrooms for ages. Um, let's see, ages uh, 5 through uh, 17. And uh, those two uh, large classrooms we're working on right now, uh, we were able to get them painted and, um, and we're re- redoing the floors and so forth in those. Uh, we've had a great partnership with the city of Cadillac. Uh, I can't even tell you how... Uh, Wonderful they have been to us, but also the community. We've been getting a number of donations from area businesses to help us pay for paint, um, flooring, and uh, you know uh, different items that um, we're going to need for for the children's center. I'm amazed and, by how many different mediums of art you just mentioned. Well, and that's what I was going to say, Tim. It sounds to me like in the past it's it's been more of a focus on the visual arts, but I'm hearing more of an emphasis on performing arts, uh, instruments, music. And I know you and I, before the show, we talked about um, uh, your partnership with the Reader's Theater which is something that yeah. you know once once I uh, once I get kids out of the house and have more time and I'm not working 17 different jobs <laughs> <laughs> when's that going to be <laughs> many moons I would I, I've I've had a conversation with Pat Pavelio and I would love to get involved with the readers theater that would be so well, much fun yes so, uh, so can I you... went to my first readers theater yeah. uh performance uh it was this last fall and I will tell you, it was the most amazing actors, 
and it was so much fun. And it just, it, it was, I can't even tell you. Um, and we did like a dinner, it was like a dinner and, um, the show it was it's very cool we do that in our drill deck so we actually have the opportunity which is nice we share with the senior center this very large drill deck in between us where we can put on a number of performances and actually be uh able to be social distance uh in a number of different ways uh going forward so wonderful this crisis is over with we will be able to do some Uh, fun things again well and that brings up another question how has up north arts been able to continue their outreach during this very very challenging last five months that we've been through so um, (laughs) i will tell you uh you know you talk about going um you know good guns right at the beginning of the year uh i think i wrote a number of different grants and we were able to receive close to about $5,000 for our summer camp program for kids. Um, And obviously we we were closed all summer into, um, uh, you know, until hopefully September, October now. Uh, And we we had to think out of the box. So my first thing that our group thought of was we did uh, called Art with a Heart. And We had 100 signs that kids could pick up, and they're lawn signs, and um, all they had to do was decorate them and utilize the words art with a heart in it and what it meant to them so they could put on their front lawn. Oh, how wonderful. It was. It was fun. And it was, you know, uh, non-contact. So people just had to come pick the sign up. We, um, in two and a half hours, over 100 signs were picked up. Isn't people wanted stuff. something to do? Yes, yeah, that was in May. We continue our conversation with Tim Florinke from Up North Arts after this word from our sponsors. Cadillac Unscripted is sponsored by Marianne Quist of Remax Central and Independent Bank. More coming up on 1079 CDY. Buying a home is still the great American dream, and yes, it can be an intimidating process. But you can rest assured and have confidence when the professionals from Remax Central are in your corner to guide you through it. Mary Ann Quist of Remax Central has helped hundreds of home buyers in and around the Cadillac area navigate the process over the years, and she's ready to help you too. From start to finish, from finding a home to submitting an offer to understanding the purchase agreement to inspections, surveys, and appraisals to the time when you finally sit down and sign those closing documents, Mary Ann will be there. When you're ready to buy, talk to Mary Ann Quist at Remax Central. See her listings at teamquist.com. We continue our conversation with Tim Florinke from Up North Arts. It's Cadillac Unscripted on 107.9 CDY. We had four winners on. Well, that was, that was a different one. We have another one. And so this one, we had four winners, and we gave those four winners in different age groups over $100 worth of art supplies. Oh, how that well, child. that's great. Yeah, and I get to deliver it to their house, and it was so much fun to talk to their moms and <laughs> you were and like, everything. You were Santa Claus. It, that's what I felt like, and it was great, and the kids loved it. And then the moms are like, what are you going to do next? So um, Mary Kidder, Sue Melma, and Molly Fryer came up with uh, this next one, and it was uh, uh, art, let's see, art camp to, let's see, yeah, art camp to go. <laughs> and what we did, <laughs> we had um, four thousand dollars, and um, in grants, and we took that money, and they bought, they used it all for art supplies for three hundred kids. Oh my goodness! And you, they let me tell you, they were good penny pitchers, and <laughs> each bag was amazing because it had. Um, high quality construction paper. Uh, it had uh, watercolor paper, watercolors, markers, and also some lessons and lesson plans for the kids. And um, it was amazing. So the first we first did it for some of the uh, kids that uh, get the different meal programs through the school, and we gave out 150 of those that day with the Yak Group. 
Um, they've been our supporters and funders. It's and Doreen Lance's group, that's right? That's right. In fact, we had Doreen on the on the show just a few oh, uh, we, weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. Youth Advisory oh, yeah. Committee of the Community Foundation. Yes. yes. Wonderful group. Yes. So, and, Dor- uh, and Doreen's amazing partner with all of this. And the Yaks kids came up with $3,000 towards this project. You know, and, that's awesome, Tim. And so then after that, this last weekend, we gave out another 150 bags. Oh, my goodness. You're like the heroes for the parents that don't know what to do with their kids. (laughs) Right. (laughs) And it was fun because we were able to give some of those bags out to, um, you know, a lot of kids had um, their relatives coming and visiting, some cousins and so forth. And they were also able to get one of these bags. And, um, you know, I know the... Um, we've gotten a lot of nice thank you note letters from uh, the parents. Wonderful. But, um, yeah, it was, it was a nice thing to do. Before we go any further, Tim, let's talk a little bit, in your estimation, in, in your opinion, what kind of a difference does the presence of art in a young person's life, how does that make a difference in their life? So myself, I can talk from that standpoint and also from the uh, art teachers that we have, you know, art enhances and makes uh, a person more whole. It brings happiness. It brings um, hope. Um, It is a wonderful way to express yourself without violence, without uh, trauma, uh, but making yourself and people feel good by the colors the you know for every stroke that you you make when you're creating something is it's absolutely amazing it's a wonderful process it's therapeutic and it um it helps so many different people from people that are recovering from illness from individuals that are suffering from depression uh if they can actually do some sort of artwork or read about art or look at painting and so forth. We've found out, you know, from medical professionals to um, th- a number of different therapists as well, uh, this is one way to uh, help people feel good. And especially in the times that we're in right now, we need those things. Oh, my goodness, yes, we do. And, Tim, we need kids to have less screen time. And yes. that's that's what you're doing, is you're saying, you know, put down the phone, look at this Irish dance, and let's play a violin, and let's learn to play the ukulele and felting and sewing, and actually doing something healthy and productive. Well, right. And that's how we get a better society. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when I came here, I... I was working with um, John Wallace from the city, and he he and I were d- discussing, you know, a cultural center, and that's something on our forefront. We want to see that. We want to bring um, all the different arts together, from the symphony to um, footlighters and um, so forth, bringing all of us together as a one uh, entity eventually. That's kind of our goal, I think, and um, our organizations all support each other uh, back and forth, which is very nice. We have a, we have a very good relationship. So, um, you know, the biggest thing now is not having people forget about us. Right. Not just us, but other nonprofits as well uh, that are, are art-focused. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we, you know, when we look at uh, funding and for us right now, our push is our children's center, and trying to find a major donor is very key. Uh, so we can purchase, um, we can actually purchase furniture and um, more uh, materials. We do just to let you know, we do have a fundraiser this fall. It's going to be our only big fundraiser. Um, to help these children, and it is going to be called, um, well, we're working on the name right now, but it will be something very similar uh, to, oh, uh, Painted Masterpieces. And what it will be is a family project where uh, you pay one amount, one donation amount, um, 
and it's probably in between 30 and $60, and you get to paint a tile that's going to go up in our hallways and in our rooms um, in our center. So we can actually bring the community in. Nice. And it was very exciting. So, so as a family, you can come in and, and you can paint a family crest or you can paint mm-hmm. flowers or you can paint anything that you want. And uh, we'll be able to put that tile up with your signature and so forth on it as a, as a representation now, when, of your contribution to us. When you say, Tim, a tile, are you talking about putting that on a wall, uh, having it on the ceiling? Uh, See, what, they're actually ceiling tiles, so they're two feet by two feet square. Okay. Oh, my. So it's a large area. Yes. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. And, and those, so are, those are going to be there forever. Right. Is that the thought? Yes. Okay. Yes. And then when if we ever have to take them down, we will give the ceiling tiles back to the family. So, but, okay. uh, you know, we don't look at moving to anytime soon. Tim, I've got a question. Uh, I love asking nonprofit folks this question. I knew this was coming. I was going to suggest that you say <laughs> okay. this, Kate. Okay. <laughs> so here we go. If, yeah. money was, cool. if money wasn't an obstacle, if money wasn't a worry, what would you do next? with the organization. Hmm. That's a great question. That that, that really is a loaded question. It really is. And it requires a lot of thought. (laughs) Yes. Honestly, I have such a a dream for this organization. I would, um, you know, a couple things that we have put in effect this year was a, uh, we we're launching our new website this month. We also put in, uh, uh, a new software system so it's easy to register with us and to get online, make donations, build classes, uh, the whole scheduling system, which is very cool, and I have some great users. I think if money wasn't an object, I think what I would love to see is when you drove into our parking lot, the building looking like an art center from the outside, to have art on the outside uh, you know, have it painted uh, and have it, um, you know, vivid with color, have people outside in the parking lot, have an area where people could uh, paint, you know, have a, a deck right. where a number of people could be out on the water Wonderful. or by the water, uh, being able to have class and paint and so forth and have such a melting pot of people uh, coming in and out of the center is huge. Wow. That's a beautiful dream right there. I, you know, I wouldn't bet against you, Tim. I, you've made a lot of other things happen. I mean, some of these things people used to have to drive an hour to to get to, and and they're happening right. in our small community now, and that, that came from a dream and a vision and drive. Yeah, and, and good people. I mean, I'm going to tell you, the people uh, like um, Jim Smith and... Uh, John Hoffman uh, are some of the names that come. Bobby Brown, uh, Sue Baker. Um, there's just uh, there's a plethora of more people and that help us out on a daily basis. Mindy Hinkle, who's a retired uh, um, uh, secretary for the schools, that volunteers, and every single one of our volunteers uh, make a huge difference in what we do. We can't do it without them. Uh, right now, we as the center is closed, we're remodeling different things with inside. Uh, we put in a coffee bar, and we're putting in, um, like I said, a, a new gift shop and office. Uh, so hopefully, you know, here in the future, we'll be able to um, do more. You know, and uh, that's what's kind of exciting. Tim, when you said you were concerned that people would forget about the organization, that that won't happen when you're serving families and children with these gift bags and art supplies and, and things like that. That's that's a wonderful way um, to keep keep things vibrant and healthy. And what we've seen with some of our nonprofits that have a, a good story to tell as we rebound from COVID-19 is they got busy when the going got tough and they rolled up their sleeves. You know, you mentioned writing a grant and receiving that grant. Um, you mentioned another, you know, yak giving you money. Those yak students, I mean, they really analyze 
their their grant requests. I, I know about this oh. through Doreen, and they ask hard questions. And I, I have found they, they seem to lean towards children's projects. So it must have been an excellent proposal, and obviously execution went very well uh, because you're getting all these nice thank you notes. So, you know, kudos to you folks for um, reconfiguring how to do it, how to bring art to people, because people were coming to you and you brought art to the people. Well, I will tell you, when I had to present to the YAC students, it was on the fly, and <laughs> it was uh, over It was over a Skype call. And <laughs> let me tell you, they had, they had awesome questions. <laughs> and, and for us to receive um, $3,000 from them uh, to do this project, and then the other part of it, the big part was, can we help, and we want to be a part of this. We don't want to just give you the money. We want to be there. That sent, like, shivers up my spine, yes. and I was so excited uh, to talk to Sawyer and a number of the, of the kids, uh, Maddie, and, and, and they just, I mean, they were, they were wonderful to us, and we just feel very fortunate that they uh, were able to help us with this, this big project. And... Um, you know, I think that was probably uh, one of the most uh, exciting factors. Sure. Great, we, great partnership. Tim, when you survey all of your volunteers and you take a look at their individual talents, is there a hole? Is there something that someone can contribute to that you think may be an underserved area? You know, honestly, we can use any volunteer that would come forward right now. Currently we're looking for, we have some board members that are coming off. Um, you know, like I said, this organization's three years old, uh, going on its fourth year. We're, um, losing a number of key positions on our board, uh, because of term limits. So, uh, we're, we're looking for new people in, in the area that uh, have a desire or a passion for art that would, that has, you know, I mean, we we love to have attorneys and accountants and and all different types of people, not just artists, uh, to be on our board of directors. The other is anyone. We will take anyone who would like to volunteer that would have a passion to do what we're doing. Um, we need we need quite a few people to keep all these classes running, keep our office going, keep someone uh, in our center. Uh, to uh, to be there for when the classes start. How much of a time commitment are we talking as far as uh, being a board member? Being a board member is probably, I think, um, we have one board meeting a month, and you utilize probably about um, four to 12 hours after that in um processing and working and, and trying to do some things for the center typically uh, when we have enough volunteers. The, so it's, it's a minimal time frame. And if you're, I mean, we have a number of people that are very well connected and it, it's very easy to, um, to help the organization that way. Tim. Uh, volunteers, it's from, you know, two hours to whatever they'd like to give. Awesome. Tim, how do we learn about Up North Arts? If, if our listeners wanted to learn more about it, either classes, programming, volunteering, and donating, um, are you out, how, how do we reach you and how do we learn about you? Oh, a couple different things. We are on Facebook, so you can like us on Facebook. Okay. And it's, you know, uh, Up North Arts, Inc. Uh, and then if you go to upnorthartsinc.org, uh, that is our website. So you can um, get to us there, and you'll see classes. And we haven't put on our fall classes yet. We're still working on timing. You know, with this virus, it's a week to week, sure <laughs> day to day, hour well, to hour, hour yes. practically. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but any new news of what we're going to do will be on there. And you know, also if you can donate to us. Uh, again, we are we are looking for active donors. We're looking for some active uh, people that would like to um, be major donors to our organization currently. Uh, and one 
especially for our Children's Center right now, to have that named after someone special here in the community is, is our, our big goal. And, uh, but again, um, we're, uh, we're, we're looking for the funding of that help build that center for these kids. And I will tell you from working with Jennifer, the superintendent of schools, uh, for CAPS and, um, uh, with all the other, um, uh, the hospital and some of the other organizations here in town, uh, it is, they have been so supportive to what we do and uh, have given us uh, uh, their ear. And it, it uh, as I spoke to uh, the superintendent of schools, you know, we have just a limited amount of art in, in school right now. Yes. Uh, with all the budget cuts and everything that happened. And that so is... we and- can get art... I'm sorry... No, no, I was just going to say you're 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 filling in a hole that needs to be filled because, you know, art is one of the first places unfortunately what that gets reduced yeah. when uh, when there are budget issues. Yes. Yeah. It it does and by buying memberships to our organization uh is a great way to help fund our center. Uh, also, if you want to sponsor a child uh for a scholarship for some of our classes, uh, that's a big help, too, because there's a lot of kids that might not be able to afford some of the classes. Some of our classes are free. Some are, some are at a cost. And um, if we can get, um, you know, people that would like to purchase a small scholarship for these kids, uh, it goes a long way. You know, $25, $50, it goes a long way um, for our children's classes. We only have a minute or two left here, Tim. Uh, so why don't you one more time uh, outline how folks can reach out to you? So um, the best way to get a hold of us is on Facebook to see what we're doing. And, uh, of course, you know, like us at Up North Arts. Um, and the other is Up North Arts Inc. Um, dot org uh, is our website. And there's always going to be a lot of information there. And check out our new website. It's very easy to use. Uh, and you can uh, very easily make a donation or get a membership for $25 at uh, when you log on. Okay. Tim, take a bow. What you're doing for kids and adults and parents um, in this community is to be commended. And we're just really, really grateful for the work that you and your board and the organization is doing. Well, thank you very much. It's not, it's. Uh, I will tell you, it's not just one person. It is. Uh, qu- I have quite a team, and I have wonderful, wonderful people I work with. Uh, and um, you know, I like I say, uh, our our next fundraiser. Please look for that with uh, painting the masterpieces uh, and painting the tiles uh, for Up North Art. We'll actually have. Um, uh, a food truck out out there. Everything's going to be socially distanced with the, out in our parking lot, and our we'll uh, we'll probably have tents. We'll also be utilizing spaces within our center as well. So, and you don't but, have a specific uh, people, date for that yet, right, Tim? It's going to be at the end of September. We okay. haven't nailed down the exact day yet. It'll okay. be um, uh, the last two weeks of September is what we're looking at, on, and it'll be on a Saturday. So families can come. This is uh, really a family event. And the weather will still be still be nice. It should still be relatively warm at that point. So, yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Well, Tim, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate being able to tell your story a little more here on the radio. Well, thank, thank you. It was a pleasure. And thanks for reaching out to us. Really appreciate your support. Tim Florinke is the president of Up North Arts in Cadillac and Katie. This was fun. It sure was. We learned a lot today. We learned a lot today, and we will learn more next week on another edition of Cadillac Unscripted, which is sponsored by Independent Bank and Marianne Quist of REMAX Central. Cadillac Unscripted on 1079 CDY.